We have operations on functions. We're going to start with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So when we add two functions, so we're adding function g and f. So if we have 2x, so literally this is 2x plus negative x plus 5. So this is x plus 5. It's the same as adding polynomials. If we have f minus g of x, we have 2x minus negative x plus 5. So we distribute that negative and we get 3x minus 5. If we're multiplying them, it's 2x times negative x plus 5. So that's negative 2x squared plus 10x. And then if you're dividing them, there's really nothing I can do with this. No, it doesn't reduce or anything, and I don't have it set equal anything so it's that's just all I can do but I do have to say that x minus 5 can't equal 0 so if this is the case then x can't equal 5 okay so if we have f plus g of x then we have x squared minus 4 plus 2x plus 1, so that's x squared plus 2x minus 3. So how you would write that? It's exactly like that. And if we have f minus g of x, that's x squared minus 4 minus 2x plus 1. Again, we're going to distribute that negative. And you would write it just like that. Alright, now, when we graph this, we're gonna, I'm going to do three, three graphs. Normally you only have to graph the composition, or you know, the addition. Okay, so I have f of x is x squared and g of x is x. So let's say I plug in 0 for x. 0 squared is 0 and then g of x is just x. So if I add them together, I'm still going to get 0. Actually, I'm going to change the colors on this. Sorry. But we're going to do this one red, or blue. This one red, and the composition we'll do in black. Okay. Um, if I plug in 1 for x, 1 squared is 1. 1 is just... 1, and then if I do 1 plus 1, I get 2. If I plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 squared is 1. And then if I add those together, I get 0. Two gives me four and two and six. Negative two gives me four and negative two 
and 2. Three would give me nine, negative three, and six, and then negative three would give me, oops, I messed that up, guys, sorry, fix this, oops, darn it. That's negative two, this should be positive three, and <clears throat> this should be 12. I got ahead of myself. This one is negative 3 and then 6. Sorry. Okay. So now if I'm going to graph these, I'm going to start by graphing f of x, which is x squared. So I have 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, 3, 9. Yeah, 3, 9, and negative 3, 9. So x squared is just our, our parabola, our standard parabola. If I factor g of x, which is just x, I'm going to get a straight line. Going through all the corners. There we go. Our composition, I have 0, 2, negative 1 gave me 0. 2 gives me 6, negative 2 gives me 2, 3 gave me 12, negative 3 gave me 6. So you can see I have a parabola. My, my vertex is going to be probably like right here. So I still have a parabola, it's just, it's steeper and moved over. Do you guys see that? Because here my points are higher, so it's steeper, and then it's shifted sideways. Okay. Now if we graph the subtraction, okay, same general idea. I'm going to do 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, and negative 3. This first column is going to be the same because it's squared. The second column is going to be the same because it's just x. What's going to change is the last column because I'm subtracting now. So 1 minus negative 1 is positive 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus negative 2, 6. 9 minus 3, 6. 9 minus negative 3 is 12. I already graphed these, so I know what they look like, so I'm just going to draw them again. So now I have 0, 0, 
negative 1 gave me a 2. 2 gives me a 2. 3 gives me 6. Negative 2 gives me 6. Then 3, or sorry, negative 3 gives me 12. And our vertex is going to be somewhere in between those two points. Now I want you guys to look at this same graph, right? Here it's shifted to the left. Here it's shifted to the right. Do you see that? But it's essentially, it's the same parabola. It's just this one's here, you know, over here, and this one's over here. Okay, so here we've got f of x and g of x, and we want to multiply the two. So I've got f times g, but the order doesn't matter, so sometimes I think it's, if g is smaller, it's easier to write g in front. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 3x times everything. And then I'm going to multiply negative 4 times everything. And then I'm going to collect my like terms. For the division, we have f of x divided by g of x, so now normally I would recommend that you try to factor this and see if it'll factor, which it will. It'll factor into x plus 4 times x plus 3, but that's not going to cancel anything because this has a 3x and that's only an x squared so there's no way that anything's going to cancel. So when you see that nothing will cancel, don't worry about factoring. But we do have to put that 3x minus 4 cannot equal 0, which means that x cannot equal 4 thirds. Now, just in case, does it, anybody have questions about how I got the four-thirds? I just solved it, basically. Okay. So we can't have x equal four-thirds, but every other x is allowed. Okay. Now, I just want to add over here to the side. Let's say g of x wasn't 3x minus 4. Let's say it was just x minus 4 or x plus 4, we'll say it's x plus 4, like that. If this happened, we would factor our numerator, then these would cancel, and so we'd have x plus 3, but we would still have to have that x plus 4 can't equal 0, so x can't equal negative 4. OK, 
Okay, so just because things cancel, that initially cannot be zero. So you still have to have that, like, you know, condition. Does that make sense? So just. All right. Here's what I meant with the open zero, okay? This is called a composition of functions, and it's a little bit different than adding or subtracting, okay? So what you have is you have an x, and this is the domain of g. And you plug that x into g of x. And then that gives you the domain of f. Because whatever you answer you get here, whatever number this is, you then plug into <clears throat> f of x. And this gives you the range. And from here to here, you've done the whole process. Okay, so. What we have here is um, we have f of g, or f of x and g of x, right? And then we have f of g and g of f. And that's how you say this, f of g, g of f. The other ones were f plus g, f times g, whatever. This is f of g. Okay, so what we do is we pick, okay, and let's, I'm going to try these first pair, and if I type in, hold on, what we do is we take, starting with g of 8, so if I say f of g of 8, well, g of 8 is 15, right? If I plug in 8 for g, I'm going to get 15. Do you see that? So that's f of 15, so that's 11. And then if I plug in f of g of 5, that's f of... Well, g of 5 is 1, and that's 8, because when f is 1, or here I get an 8. If I do f of g of 10, when I plug in 10 for g, I get 14, so that's f of 14. And when I plug in 14 for f, I get 9, and f of g of 9, which is this last pair, gives me f of 0, and when I plug in 0 on f, I get 13. So everything worked, right? I was able to get to a point. So this set would give me 8, 11, 5, 8, 10, 9, and then 9, 13. To G of F, Okay, if I do g of f, that means I need to do f 
of x first. So this is going to be g of f of, if I plug in 1, that's going to give me h. Okay, so I plugged in 1 in the f, which would give me 8. Then I plug in 8 on g to get 15. Not a dead end. If I plug in 0 on f, I get 13, right? So 0 gives me 13. And here's where I'm going to have a problem. There are no 13s here. Do you see that? So I've hit a dead end. So it doesn't exist. So this one does not exist. Do you still want to see another one? Pause this. And let me find one. Okay, so if I want to try to see if f of g exists and, and what set that would be. pick the first g, which is 4. And if I plug in 4 into g, I'm going to get 3. And then I go to find a 3. So if I plug in 3 for f, I get negative 2. And then I go to the next g, right here, 2. If I plug in 2 for g, I get negative 1. So I find the negative 1 on the f, and it gives me negative 5. And then I plug in the next g, which is 9, right there, which gives me 4. And if I go to the 4 on the f, I get 7. And the last g is 3, and it gives me 10. And if I plug in 10 for f, I get 8. So then this set, I take this g and this final answer. So it's 4, negative 2, 2, negative 5, 9, 7, and 3, 8. That's the new set. If I try g of f, sometimes they both work both ways. Sometimes they don't. If I take g of f, I start with f. And I start with 3, which gives me negative 2. And then look, I have no negative 2s here. So this doesn't exist. So that means that this composition, so g of f, does not exist. All right. Oh, wait, no, we have to go back. OK. Here I have compositions of expressions, OK? So if I do f of g of x, okay, f of x is 2a minus 5, and g of x is 4a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 4a, and these should actually all be a's. That shouldn't be x's. I don't know what I was doing. Those should be a's. I'm going to take this 4a and plug it in for this a right here. Okay. So I get 2 times 4a minus 5. Right, so I take that 2a minus 5 and instead of a, I plug in g 
so 4a. So that's 8a minus 5. If I want to do g of f of x, it's the opposite. g of x, or a, these should be a's. g of a is 4a. f of a is 2a minus 5, so what I do is where this a is, here, I'm going to plug in 2a minus 5. And I get 8a minus 20. So you plug them in for the variables on each other. Okay, moving forward. Why is this useful? If we have a new car dealer and he is discounting all new cars by 12% and the manufacturer is offering a $1,500 rebate and you wanted to purchase a $24,500 car, is it cheaper? if you apply the discount and then the rebate or is it cheaper if you do the rebate and then the discount? That's a compositional function. Okay, so what we have is you have a $2,400 or $24,500 car. Okay. And discount rebate, right? So the discount so we have the total car price minus the car price times the percent off and then take out away the rebate Or we can take the rebate and that's going to give us a price and then we take the discount off of that. So we'll try this one first. Oh, too big. Right. So I'm going to do 24500 times 0.12. Right? And then I'm going to subtract that from the car, and I'm going to get 21,560 minus 1,500. That's $20,060 that you'd be paying for the car. Or if we do the rebate first, you'd be paying $20,240 for the car. So as you can see, better to take the discount first and then the rebate. Then the rebate first and then the discount. Does that make sense? Wouldn't it be obvious that... Okay. Inverse functions and relations. Okay, um, you might remember that relations are sets of ordered pairs, and functions are special kinds of relations. So, if an in a relation is an inverse of each other, then B would be an inverse 
if all of the ordered pairs were flipped. Okay, so A comma B is an inverse of B comma A. So B would only be an inverse if all of these ordered pairs are completely flipped. Okay, so inverses, we have triangle ABC is represented by this relation 1, negative 2, 2, 5, and 4, negative 1. So we're going to graph them, um, and I'm going to make every two lines equal to 1 just to make it easier. So I'm going to do 1, negative 2, so 1, 1, 2, 5, 4, negative 1. Okay. Oh, no. didn't quite work. Nope. My shape recognition software isn't working for me. Close enough. Okay. First, find the inverse. Inverses are prime, and so the inverse of triangle ABC, so A prime, B prime, C prime, is negative 2, 1, 5, 2, and negative 1, 4. So I go negative 2, 1, 5, so 1, Five, two, and negative one, one, two, three. And I'll just draw the triangle this time. And these two triangles are inverses of each other. Um, this triangle here would be A, B, C, and this triangle is A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, so properties of inverses. If F and f to the negative 1. That's how you would indicate a functional inverse is with an exponent of negative 1. Um, if you have f of a equals b, then f of negative 1 of b has to equal a. Okay. So if I, to see if these are inverses, I have f of 6. Well, that's 6 minus 4. Oh, wait, I'm still in shape recognition. Sorry. That's 6 minus 4, which is 2. Okay. Well, then I have to take F inverse of 2. Okay, hold on. Well, that's... 2 plus 4, which equals 6. And since this matches that, they are inverses.
Okay, so how do I find the inverse? Okay, so to find the inverse, first you set it equal to y. So first I'm going to set this equal to y. So instead of f of x equals 2x minus 5, I'm going to say it's y equals 2x minus 5. And then I switch x and y. So then I say x equals 2y minus 5. And then I solve it for y. So 2y equals x plus 5. So y equals x plus 5 over 2. So the inverse of 2x minus 5 is x plus 5 over 2. All right, so I'm going to graph f of x in blue and I'll gra graph f inverse of x in red. And I'm just going to plot some points. Um, if I plug 0 in, I get negative 5. If I plug in 1, I get negative 3. So you can see I'm going up 2 over 1, which is my slope, actually. So I can just keep doing that. down two, back one. And I'm going to have this nice straight line. Okay. Now if I'm doing the inverse, if I plug in zero, I'm going to get uh, five halves. So I'm not going to bother with that. But if I plug in one, I get six over two, so three. So if I plug in one, I have three. One. If I plug in two, I'm going to get another half something. So if I plug in three, though, I get four. If I plugged in negative 1, I'd get 2. So you can see I'm going up 1 over 2 or down 1 back 2. this line. And of course those lines go on forever. Okay. find the inverse of this guy. Okay, so y is equal to the square root of x minus 1. It's actually plus or minus, right? Because we don't know which one it is, the positive or the negative. So that's f of negative inverse of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. Okay. Okay, I'm going to 
plug graph f of x and blue f inverse and red. This is our basic parabola moved up one. So that's f of x. Now this one's going to take a little work. Uh, if I plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 1. So that doesn't work, right? But if I plug in 1, I get 0. If I plug in 2, I get the square root of 1, but I get plus or minus. If I plug in 3, I'd get the square root of 2. 4 gives me the square root of 3. 5, though, gives me the square root of 4, which is 2. So I have 2, 3, 4, 5, plus or minus 2. And then I won't have another perfect square again until I plug in 10, right? Which would give me 3. So it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3. Okay. I want you to notice, though, something. This is 0, 1, and this is 1, 0. This point here is 1, 2, this is 2, 1. This point here is 2, 5, this is 5, 2. Do you see that? So it's every x and y just switched. So once we graphed this function, if we just take those points and flip them, we would have gotten these points. Okay. So inverse functions, functions are only inverses of each other if their compositions give you x. So f of g has to give you x and g of f has to give you x. That's how you can tell if, if functions are inverse of each other without having to plug in a bunch of points and do a bunch of work. Um, so what we do is first we find f of g of x. Okay, so g of x is 1 third x minus 3. f of x is 3x plus 9. So I'm going to take that 3x plus 9. I'm going to plug 1 third x minus 3 in for x. 3 times a third is just x. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and then I have plus 9, so this gives me x. So that one worked. So if I plug in g of f of x, I have a 1 third x minus 3, but instead of x, I'm going to put in 3x plus 9. 1 third of 3 is 1. 1 third of 9 is 3, and then minus 3, so that gives me x. And since they both give me x, they are inverses.